Oh. If you've ever taken a look inside an electronic product before, or have some general knowledge of electronics, you've probably seen or heard of a capacitor. A capacitor stores electrical energy, similar to a battery, but in a very different way. A battery stores its energy within a chemical, which can then be converted into electrical energy to power whatever you want. Whereas a capacitor actually stores the electrical energy in the form of static electricity. What this means is that it can be charged and discharged much faster than a battery can. But there are some disadvantages. So here I have a motor and a propeller strapped to a piece of wood so it hopefully doesn't fly away. And I have a battery cell and a capacitor. Now what I can do is I can wire up this battery to power the electric motor. And I should also be able to use the capacitor to output its electrical energy to power the motor. Oh, that's a, that's a capacitor fully discharged. So from that quick test, you can tell that a capacitor has far less energy density than a battery. And this is where supercapacitors come in. A supercapacitor works in a similar way to a regular capacitor, but it's a bit more advanced and can store far more energy. Not quite as much as a battery, but it can be charged and discharged pretty quickly. So how about we wire this up to the motor? Okay, it's a bit of a dodgy connection just holding the wires like this. But that should give you a pretty good idea that supercapacitors have far more energy density than regular capacitors. In fact, a supercapacitor has enough energy to power a small plane like this, which can be charged up in a matter of seconds and powers this plane for quite a bit of time. Now this plane is pretty cool, but I still don't think it's using the full potential of a supercapacitor. So I think it's time to step it up a notch. Or maybe a bit more. <laughs> I'm going to use six of these supercapacitors to power a 500 watt brushless motor uh, using a large propeller to see how high I can launch an electric rocket. Let's go. Right, so before I shorten the wires and make everything a bit neater, I just want to give it a quick run just to check whether, uh, first of all, nothing is wired up wrong and also that the supercapacitors can power the motor. So that's just uh, telling the speed controller what to do and I should be able to short these into a battery. I highly do not recommend this, but I haven't put a connector on this just yet. So shove this in here in three, two, one. Maybe it needs to charge up for longer. Oh. I haven't got anything plugged into the battery right now. Should we increase the throttle and see if it will spin? <laughs> it's working! There's, there's nothing charging up the capacitors. So that motor is running 100% off of these supercapacitors. Oh, that is so cool. Look, battery fully disconnected. There's a very small battery here to power the servo tester, but it's not applying any power to the system. So what will also be interesting is when the motor cuts out, what's the lowest voltage? The speed controller here is rated for a minimum of a two cell lithium polymer battery which will be about 7.4 volts so it'll be interesting to see whether it shuts off turn the speed up a little bit and I guess we'll just wait for the uh, supercapacitors to run out the motor obviously won't last this long when it has a propeller on it because it has a lot more resistance then a lot more current will be drawn so uh, although it's running for a long time now it's uh, it's not under any load, so that's kind of expected. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, that seems like it is dead. So the supercapacitors are obviously at a low enough voltage for the speed controller to cut out. And let's check the voltage. 6.4 volts. So yeah, the motor cuts out at 6.4 volts, which is probably not enough power to really lift much anyway. So uh, that's not a problem. Now I know the power system's working, what I'm going to do is neaten up the wiring and the soldering and uh, connect everything together and then we can get on with the parachute deployment mechanism. Whilst I'm getting on with the rest of the build, I want to thank this video's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in Arduino, electronics, CAD design and more, so that you can learn to build projects such as this. A premium membership gives you unlimited access to thousands of high quality classes, all created by experts in their fields, so that you can learn new skills to open new opportunities. Instead of browsing the internet for hours looking for a specific tutorial, Skillshare has loads of tutorials all on one site. It's also more affordable than most other learning platforms, with an annual subscription working out at just under $10 per month. By clicking the Skillshare link down in the description below, the first 500 people that sign up will get a two month free trial and it also helps support my channel. So thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this episode and go check out Skillshare if you want to learn more. Okay, so here we have it, the finished supercapacitor rocket. At the top here, I have the motor and propeller, which is the thrust unit. Uh, the reason for it being at the top is not for stability reasons. Uh, it doesn't matter at what point on a rocket you have the thrust unit. Uh, if you research the pendulum rocket fallacy, uh, the reason why it's at the top and not the bottom is because with the propeller being at the bottom there's clearance issues with the ground uh, i would need to build big fins to go around the side of the propeller and also if i need to add any kind of guide rail system up the side of the rocket the propeller must be well clear of that guide system so it will basically have a no-go zone disc as the propeller rises up from the ground so having it at the top just gets rid of any clearance issues the motor is powered uh, or controlled via this electronic speed controller. It's 30 amps and it, well, this is currently set up for about 18 volts, um, but it can run up to 25 volts, I believe. Um, and then obviously we have the whole supercapacitor unit. Uh, there's six supercapacitors in total. Uh, the reason for this is that supercapacitors are usually quite low voltage. Um, these are rated for three volts each, so six of them in series is 18 volts. Uh, these are all what obviously wired into the speed controller directly to the motor. Having the all the mass at the top is what you want for a stable rocket and also having the supercapacitors so close to the motor means I should be able to deliver the power a lot better without having some thick gauge wires going down to the bottom. Now you can probably see this yellow thing in here. This is actually the connector where I charge up the rocket. It's the same as what I have on a lot of my batteries and I'll just give you a demonstration of how I charge this up. So if I turn on my radio control, I should be able to plug it in and wait for a couple seconds and that's probably charged. And then I can just control the throttle. So that's what's cool about having these supercapacitors is I can fully charge the rocket in a matter of seconds. Uh, so we can do loads of launches using just one battery. Now moving down the rocket is the parachute deployment system. It's almost like an upside down rocket because normally rockets have the parachute at the top and the thrust at the bottom. Whereas this is the thrust at the top and the parachute at the bottom. Now I've built it into the fin system and the way it deploys is the, this whole fin section is split into two halves and there's a rubber band that holds it, holds these two halves together and that clamps it to the tube. So if I flick this switch, it should move a small servo which is inside of here and that should deploy the parachute. Now some of you that were paying extra extra attention whilst I was building the rocket may have noticed that this fin design is slightly different to the fin design during the build part of this video. And that's because this is actually the version two capacitor rocket. So what I'm going to do is rewind a few days to show you what happened to the version one rocket. Right, so I haven't made a proper launch pad for it yet, but the weather's so nice right now that I decided to uh, just give it a quick test. Let's just give it a bit of height, or at least see if it works, and uh, check the parachute deployment. 
in three, two, one. Okay, that was interesting. <laughs> okay, test number two. In three, two, one. Ah, we might have a bit of an issue. Oh. So now that I've spent a few days rebuilding the rocket, I've made a few changes to the top half to make it a lot stronger. And I've also modified the clamping point here where the fins clamp to the fuselage. So hopefully they'll be a lot more rigid in flight and be able to stabilize the rocket enough to not explode. Uh, they also don't twist anymore. Um, so yeah, how about we go take it for a test flight to see if this thing will actually fly. Let's go. Right, so here we go. I've got a small plank of wood as the launch pad. Uh, I've got the rocket, the battery to charge it, and the remote. What I'm going to do is get the drone up in the air and uh, send this baby into the sky. The wind is very calm right now. Uh, it's a bit misty and cloudy. But, um, oh, that's just the, the motor has an alarm. So after 10 minutes, if I lose the rocket, it beeps. Just need to throttle it a little bit to uh, stop that. Right, let's get the drone in the air. Okay, so the drone is in place. What I need to do is charge up the rocket using the battery pack. That should be charged up enough. Right, so I'm going to try and film this uh, whilst controlling it because I think that might be the best way to do it. So I'm going to spool up the motor slowly and then go full throttle and see if this thing will work. In three, two, one. Yes! Right, and then parachute deployment. Oh, that is so good. Yes. Can I zoom in? There we go. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, I'm so happy. In three, two, one. Yes. Right, and then parachute deployment. Oh, that is so good. Yes. Can I zoom in? There we go. <laughs> that actually works a lot better than I expected. Well, at least from those first few test flights. <laughs> The, uh, the propeller looks a bit bent, uh, but I can just straighten it out or replace the propeller. I hope the wet grass hasn't ruined anything. Set up for another test launch. Right, so I've set it up for another test launch. I haven't charged up yet because I need to get the drone in the air. But from that first test launch, um, obviously it went really well. I actually shut the throttle off early uh, because I thought it was flying over towards those trees but it only landed like 20 meters away. So um, I'm going to hold the throttle open for a lot longer this time. See if we can get some more altitude. In three, two, one. Oh yes. Oh, focus. This seems pretty reliable now. So I still shut the throttle off a bit early on that flight. Uh, it's very hard to tell how far the rocket goes right now uh, because I'm trying to look through the viewfinder of this camera whilst filming it, or whilst flying it. Uh, I thought it was going to go near these power lines, but it's still quite a way off from any objects. At least the parachute successfully deploys and uh, everything seems intact. In three, Two, one. Oh no, no, deploy, deploy, deploy. Oh. <laughs> We're so close. That was so close. 
So it's very easy to rush the parachute packing whilst I'm out here in the field. Um, but I think I'm going to take a bit more care next time because that was a very close call. Oh. Don't know why it's doing that. Maybe the speed controller has some water in it. Seems to be working okay now. So uh, I'm just gonna keep launching this. This is good fun. <laughs> In three, two, one. Yeah, boy. <laughs> In three, two, one. Oh. <laughs> um, right, the parachute didn't come out on that one. Uh, I think I probably just stated the most obvious thing. <laughs> right, let's go see what happened to the rocket. Hopefully it's not broken, um, because I'll need to do some repairs. <laughs> uh, my feet, my shoes and my socks are soaking wet, so I think it's time to head in anyway. Uh, ah. Right, yeah. <laughs> it seems to have exploded the fins, which is annoying because I've ran out of blue filament. Right, I think we've got a few good successful launches out of that though, so uh, let's head in and sum up this project after I collect all the parts and put it in my bag. <laughs> so there we have it, the super capacitor powered rocket. I'm really pleased with the way it flew in the end, uh, especially after those first few version test flights, more like explosions. Uh, the parachute deployment worked most of the time, uh, apart from obviously the last time. Uh, I'm not sure how high the rocket went, but uh, on one of the flights I parked the drone at about 80 meters high and this was just below it, maybe 60 meters high. Uh, so just under 200 feet, I reckon. I've learned a whole lot about supercapacitors whilst doing this project. Uh, I knew what an electrolytic, electrolytic capacitor was uh, from everyday electronic components, uh, but I had no idea the capabilities of supercapacitors. Uh, I've heard about them, uh, but I always thought they were like a thing of the future that you hear with fast charging electric cars. So to actually be able to use them uh, in something like this uh, was was really good actually it was really good fun to learn about uh, I'd like to thank you very much for watching and if you enjoyed this video please leave a thumbs up if you're new to my channel please click subscribe down below and a huge huge thanks to all of my patrons for being uh, supportive uh, throughout this time of building these projects uh, it's been quite a, it's, I think it's been about three weeks since my last project um, mainly due to explosions of this and uh, learning about this well these capacitors so thanks very much to all my patrons for making these videos possible and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye. Oh, it's cold.